This is the Badger 24-7 Podcast with your host, Evan Flood. Ugh, we're not even 48 hours into this coaching change, and, and I'm already sick of the national media trying to insert themselves into this Wisconsin coaching search and try and create narratives that aren't there. You've probably read it a few times already. Uh, This is not a knee-jerk reaction from Wisconsin. They need to cut that out. Look at the total records, the entire body of work, and and assume Wisconsin panicked because they got beat badly by Ohio State and Illinois. You guys are smart enough to know that's not what happened here. Not defending the decision that Chris McIntosh made, not agreeing with it. I don't know. I want to see it all play out. But people on the outside looking in have no freaking idea what they're talking about. You guys know the program. You know the product and what it should look like on the field every Saturday. That ain't it. Don't let these guys tell you that the Badgers made a knee-jerk reaction here. Uh Uh-uh. Also, don't let them fool you with all the names that they're going to throw out there for this job. I am telling you, if I'm wrong, I will eat it later. Bring the hammer down on me. I am telling you, this is Jim Leonard's job to lose. I'm very, very confident Wisconsin does not want to have to make an outside hire here. A lot of other people right now are trying to open it up to an outside discussion, generate clicks by making you think that other people could get this job. And I don't know what's going to happen this season, but you got to understand it and and be able to put two and two together here. Like like I talked about earlier in the week, and there's some more stuff I want to touch on that that I overlooked and and should have mentioned as well. You got to understand how Wisconsin feels about Jim Leonard. They look at him like a son, and that's a lot of people in the athletic department. These guys think the world of Jim Leonard. Heck, Bill Sheridan, former inside linebackers coach, was here for a few months, compared him to Nick Saban. The other part of this, too, like I said, Wisconsin does not make this move without Jim Leonard in the fold already. They want him to get this job. I'm not going to put wins and losses on it in terms of what he has to do in order to get this job in 2023. Obviously, 0-7, 1-6, even 2-5 and would not bode well for him. But I was on the, the 24-7 Sports National podcast, and, and I'll repeat what I said there. This is more about getting Wisconsin's football culture back. He got slapped in the trenches by Illinois. I don't recognize that program anymore as the team that was always the toughest, most disciplined. You knew you were in for a 60-minute fist fight. You saw it here and there in 2021. Didn't see it hardly at all in 2020. It's been non-existent this, this fall. Get, if he gets back to that and gets Wisconsin's identity back on the field, I, I don't know if I care what the end result is in terms of a record if I'm Chris McIntosh. I think that's what you need to see first and foremost is reestablishing that identity. So Lance Leipold, Dave Aranda, Dave Doran, Sean Lewis, Jake Dickert, Mel Tucker, Thomas Hammock, whatever names you're going to see come up there, and it's a coaching search. I mean, there are going to be new hot names every other week. Somebody's going to have some type of scoop. Especially now when Leonard hasn't even coached a game. I'm telling you to ignore it. Right now the board is one coach deep. And that's Jim Leonard. Wisconsin absolutely wants him to take this job and run with it. Mark it down. It's been determined long ago that this guy was going to be a head coach at Wisconsin at some point. Is he ready for it at 39 years old? I don't know. But if he's Nick Saban, like some people <laughs> suggested, you know, that's obviously a wild statement to make for a guy who's never coached a game, but but I think it was more in terms of his football mind. 
You know, if you could get Nick Saban at 26, you'd do it. The age doesn't matter. The other part, you kind of compare this to what Notre Dame went through last season with Marcus Freeman. All the players are going to want Jim Leonard. All of the shot callers are going to want Jim Leonard. You have an entire recruiting class that probably wants Jim Leonard, at least the defensive side of uh, the guys on the defensive side of the ball. They were going to play for him anyway. It's not going to affect them a ton. You take out Jim Leonard, you risk losing him to another school. There's no guarantee he stays if he gets passed up on that job. So you lose one of the elite college, uh, elite defensive coordinators in college football. You also risk blowing up your entire recruiting class because the new guy is going to want to hire mostly his own guys. So all the players are losing their position coaches. And Wisconsin's always been about saving money, more bang for your buck. You're going to get Leonard at a, at a good price. If he retains the defensive coordinator title, I, I don't know if you can pull that off. But... You don't necessarily need a strong defensive coordinator. Leonard's probably still going to want to call plays. So you can cut that out of the budget, too. And in a world, in NIL, where, you know, let, let's just cut out the BS. You're trying to buy kids. That's a big plus. So I, I just wanted to start that way. Just to let you guys know. The only name you need to worry about right now is Jim Leonard. And that's the way it's going to stay. Uh, until the season carries forward. You've also got a, a hurt locker room that's reeling right now. They're not going to just play for anybody. You risk a ton of transfers, uh, you know, if you hire from the outside as well. It's almost too easy of a move not to make. It's too seamless. And like I said, Wisconsin desperately wants it. They absolutely love Jim Leonard. I'm not saying he has to do what Greg Gard did when he was interim head coach and stepped in for Bo Ryan and, and completely turned things around. I just think it's going to take a lot to get him out of there. And like I mentioned, if you don't hire him, you might be kissing him goodbye. I don't think Wisconsin wants to take that risk. And I know I said it a lot now, but I need to drive it home. Wisconsin's not moving off Paul Chris the way they did midseason. If they don't have Jim Leonard, who they think is ready to go. So, all right, we're going to have former Badger Madison Cohn on the show today. Hope to get his reaction on everything going on. He was one of the, he was part of one of the first recruiting classes for Paul Christ in, in 2017. Uh, so he's kind of seen a little bit of both, the highs and the lows of this program. Hopefully, he's got some insight you know, into where things are right now. I'm sure he's got some connections to, to some of the current players as well. Can kind of give us uh, maybe some insight into how the locker room's doing. Uh, also knows Jim Leonard very well. Was recruited by Jim Leonard. Played for Jim Leonard. I, I know he didn't finish his career at Wisconsin, uh, but he played a lot of football in Madison. So he can tell us uh, what, what type of head coach he might be for this program. So let's not waste any more time here. We'll bring in Madison right now. So Madison, can you just kind of talk about your initial reaction when you saw that head coach Paul Christ had been fired after just five games? You played for the guy. You were part of one of his first recruiting classes. You had been here in, in really the apex of Wisconsin football, depending on how you want to look at it, under Coach Christ. How did you just kind of handle that news, and what was just kind of your original reaction? Um, yeah, um, uh, it was sad to see, honestly, um, you knew, I mean, uh, the season was starting off kind of rough and, um, you know, just even kind of looking at, um, the way last season went, um, a little bit and not that last season went bad. I mean, a lot of programs would have been, you know, um, they, they would have loved to have that season, but we know at Wisconsin, the standards are a little higher. Um, so, you, um, 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 I, I, I know that, you know, uh, the people who are used to the Wisconsin culture and, 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 and that top brand of football that we want to put out 
weren't satisfied and, and even like I said this season uh started it's starting off a little rocky but um so 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 you kind of knew that people were unhappy you know uh you're taught uh, as a player to, to 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 uh ignore the noise and uh, everything that's going on on social media and stuff but you know um you know people are going to talk and you can tell that you know um, um people weren't happy and um you know so it was kind of you know college sports is brutal you kind of knew it was a possibility but to actually see the news um it was sad to see um um but you know um uh, it's kind of the nature of the business um um as much as you hate to say it you know coach chris is a great guy um um stand up guy he it was um you know with him it was always about the players um um i'm i'm truly indebted and, and, and thankful uh, for, for him taking the chance of, of, of bringing myself from North Carolina up, up, uh, to be a part of his team. Um, and uh, we had a lot of success while I was there. So uh, it, it was an amazing ride. And, um, and, 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 and he, he was a great coach. I mean, uh, uh, he, he was always for the players. He was somebody you could walk in his office and talk to him at any time. He was very relational. And, um, and, and yeah, he, 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 he was a great people person, you know, um, and, and, and everybody that played for him, you know, I'm not going to say everybody, but pretty much everybody that played for him, the, the majority uh, of his players loved him. And you saw that um, just uh, in the post and, 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 and things that are going out uh, these past couple of days. So, um, like I said, um, um, it was sad to see. Um, you kind of knew it was a possibility, you just kind of knowing the nature of the beast of, 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 of college football, uh, especially uh uh, uh, when, when you want to be a top program, and, and, and that's clearly where uh, Wisconsin uh, uh, wants to be, and that's the culture that that they kind of Barry Alvarez laid, in, and that we're still trying to build on. You kind of touched on on something I'm a little fascinated by, but you know, I think there, there's a big difference when you go from high school to college. Just like you mentioned, it, it becomes kind of a, a business, and I, I think the really good head coaches will kind of shield players from that as much as possible and keep it about the game. But obviously when you see something like this, um, you know, a guy like Coach Chris, who's from Wisconsin, been been here pretty much his whole life, played for the Badgers, uh, that, that he could just be fired like that midseason despite winning 65% of his games, 70% of his games in, in Big Ten play, 6-1 and one in bowl games. He got two New Year's Six bowl wins. I mean, he had done things that no other Wisconsin coach had, had done you know, if you could put yourself in the shoes of these 18, 19, 20, 21 year old kids that, you know, how do you think they get back to maybe just having fun on the football field when something like this goes down and kind of ignore all the strings that, you know, are being pulled behind the scenes? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's definitely, um, it's definitely a blow, right? Um, um, when you commit to a school, I mean, you're. I mean, everybody says you know, go somewhere where 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 where, where you can get a great education, and where football wasn't an option, um, you would still be happy there, which is true. But at the same time, I mean, you commit somewhere um, because of the coach. I mean, you know, you know, that's the reality. You know, uh, when I committed there, I committed to play. For, for, for Coach Paul Chris and, and, and under Coach Jim Leonard as my D coordinator, like, 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 I went there, of course, because there's a great education at Wisconsin, but, I mean, I was comfortable with those guys. Those are the guys I wanted to play under, and the guys that are there now, especially the young guys um, that I feel for kind of mostly in this situation, you know, when you commit somewhere, um, um, like, that coach recruits you, and, 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 and like, you want to play for that guy. So, um, definitely, you know, for, 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 for young players, that's definitely a blow. Um, kind of with the transition, hopefully, uh, I'm hoping uh, uh, that, that Coach Leonard uh, uh, is the person that, that takes uh, uh, the job uh, permanently. I know he's interim right now. I think that that's going to help um, 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 the, 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 the transition. I mean, the, the fact that it's Coach Leonard, somebody who's so respected, you know, and, and, and somebody who, I mean, uh, most people who play for him love playing for him. Um, so um, I think, you know, if – Coach Leonard is the next move. I think that'll be uh, an easier transition because it's somebody who's been around and somebody who um, everybody's used to seeing. But bringing in somebody totally new, um, um, especially for younger guys, like I said, who, who committed to play for Coach Chris, um, um, it's a it's a process. It, it, it's something that you know that that, that 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 mentally you have to deal with, and and um, that you just got to process and. I mean, eventually you got to be able to move forward, you know, no matter who the decision is. But if it's somebody who's been around, it'll definitely be a more comfortable um, transition based off uh, just kind of my experiences uh, as a college athlete. I don't know if you have any relationships with any of the guys on the team, but but I'm sure you've talked to some of your former teammates about it. Not that you have to single anybody out, but 
Is this decision in your mind widely viewed as a popular one? Um, as far as um, Coach Chris being in or out, are you saying is that a popular yeah, yeah. Decision? I mean, do you think people are on board with that and agree with it? Would you say? I mean, I wouldn't say so. I mean, the the, the people who play for Coach Chris. I mean, and, and it's one of those things, just like you said. I mean, you. You, you ran off some stats early in our conversation. He's won 65, you know, 70% of his games, you know, uh, in conference. Six, he's got, he's played, he's like six and one in bowl games. He's got two New Year's six bowl wins, right? So it's just like, you know, um, like the stuff he's done, I mean, like, like it's it's stuff he's done. I think I think he was a two-time Big Ten coach of the year, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken. So, I mean, I mean, his resume it, it, it is there. You know, it's just one of those things, um, just kind of the nature of college sports. You can have all that success. But um, you know, if if you have a if you have a two year, um, kind of down period, if you want to say, um, um, two three year down period, you know, um, everything you've done in the past, it kind of goes out the window real quick. You know, um, nature of the beast. You know, you know when you're doing well, when you're high, everyone loves you. But you know, you know when when, when stuff goes down for a little bit, it, when, when you hit a little rebuilding period, um, um, you know, um, um they. People don't have much patience, um, especially in this business. So um, it's just kind of the nature of it. I wouldn't say it's popular um, 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 that, that, that people wanted him out. I mean, of course, I mean, you know, um, you know, we're all competitors. Everybody who played there got there because, you know, that, that they're competitors and, and that they want to win and we want to see Wisconsin win. But, you know, um, you know, it's kind of the nature of it. Some some years are up, some years are down. And um, But to answer your question directly, um, uh, I, 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 from, from the guys that played for Coach Chris, there, there, there's a ton of respect for him, and um, um, I wouldn't say that. I mean, the, 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 the guys who actually got to play for him and be around him, um, um, you know, they would have liked him uh, uh, to, 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 to get a little more time to turn things around, just because of what he's proven he can do in the past. I mean, uh, his, his numbers speak for himself. On the flip side of that, obviously the last three, or I guess two plus seasons, haven't exactly been. Up to standard. I mean, Wisconsin's one, sure. one and nine in in For games sure. against top twenty opponents. You know, haven't been to the Big Ten title game in, in two years now. Looking like it, it might be a third. I don't want to speak for you, but I mean, as a, a former player, I think, you know, it's only natural you want to see the program that, you know, you poured your blood, sweat, and tears into go forward and, and know that, you know, your your time what was worth it so so to speak i mean did you have any concerns you know watching the product maybe this season that that it was going in the other direction or did you kind of just maybe just view it as a rough patch that you know eventually wisconsin as it always kind of has has worked out of i mean uh um just like i kind of hit it before right you know everybody who got to that level you know um we're, we're all competitors, right? Uh, we all want to win. We want to see Wisconsin win. You know, like, even like you know, like guys like me who aren't playing anymore. You know, you know, um, you know, we we have a sense of connection to the program because of you know the blood, sweat, and tears, and um, and uh, the time we spent. You know, trying to help build it. You know, trying to leave it better than we found it when we got there. You know, so um, so yes, I mean, we 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 want to see you know uh, the guys be successful, and when that doesn't happen, you know, um, you know, uh, it's easy to you know um. You know, sit back, point fingers, critique, and um, and right. um, so so yeah. I mean, yeah, you naturally want to see uh, the team be successful, and um, you know, there are things that you know, um, since we're not having success, there are a couple of things that that uh, need to change, and I'm sure that Wisconsin seeds need to change. So you know, um, I'm just like you know, every program where you're not having success, you kind of go to the you go to the drawing board, you, you change some things up, and um, um, um you, you try to change things for the better. So it will be Jim Leonard, at least here for the next seven games. Obviously, there's potential for more. What is your confidence level like in him having played for the guy uh, that, that he can be the one to pick the pieces up here and kind of carry it forward? I'm excited. Uh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm truly excited for him to take the reins. Um, but like I said, I hope it's him permanently. I hope um, – I mean, I don't know how the rest of this season is going to go um, on, on an interim basis, but I really hope he gets a chance to lead the team and, uh, you know, recruit the way he wants to recruit. Uh, he wants to recruit, bring in the players that he wants to bring in and, and just implement, you know, some stuff that the, 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 the way that, 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 that he sees fit. Um, I can remember as a player being in Coach Leonard's office, us watching defensive film, and it wasn't um, – uh, uh, it wasn't um, – it wasn't rare to see uh, an offensive coach come in there and, and, and ask Coach Leonard, hey, 
you know, when we're going against cover two, you know, um, um, on what's some stuff that we can scheme up, where some windows we can hit. Uh, when if a team's sitting in cover three or they're sitting in cover four, um, um, on what are some good schemes or, or what's some stuff that we can hit. And Coach Leonard, he would, he would go to the board with him. He would draw out the coverage, and he would show him, like, this is where we should hit. This is, like, 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 like there's going to be an opening here, opening here, windows here. So, I mean, like, Coach Leonard is a defensive mastermind, but being a defensive mastermind um, – Offensive coaches always respected that from him, and they would come to him and, and, and they would ask for um, um, his advice there, even from an offensive perspective. So, um, um, I think you know, I, I, I think he's going to do some some fun stuff with with uh, the offense. You know, you know, um, if he gets the chance. Not saying that he'll be over the offense, but I mean, you know, he'll 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 probably you know uh, bring in or he'll get his input, you, you know, to put the to put the right people in place to 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 to, to, to do some things on offense that that that. That we've honestly been been uh, wanting to see for a while now, you know them them, them just spreading it out and, and expanding what we do a little bit. Um, I I just um, after being with Coach Leonard, uh, just spending time with him, his knowledge for the game and his game as a whole, not just for defense. Um, um, I, I, I I think I think he can do you you know some great stuff for Madison. He's already been tremendous for the city, just in just in who he was as a player, who he's been as a coach, and I think there's a I, I think that there's another layer of what he can bring to Madison. Um, um, as the head coach, you know, doing things his way. Um, um, I, I hope he gets the opportunity, and um, I, I, I'm excited just because, just because I've got to, um, I'm sitting in many meetings and stuff with him, and just see his genius on display. I think there's, I think there's even more to what he has to offer. So I hope he gets that chance. Then, lastly, genius is is always the word everyone uses when, when they describe him. Yeah, I'm curious if there's just a story that you can kind of share or or, or just sum it up maybe in layman's terms into why people say that, you know, about the way he goes about constructing his defense. Um, if something comes off the top of your head here. Yeah, I think, um, I think just when you meet the guy, right, you know, he's somebody that, um, you know, that we kind of all know. I mean, uh, if you were, you know, if you were at an event or somewhere full of people, you know, uh, Jim Leonard could walk in and I mean, he wouldn't stand out at all. He just he fit in with the crowd. So just just, just seeing from a physical standpoint, the guy, the type of guy he is, um, um, just just a stature and um and, and the success he was able to have. You know, a, a ten year NFL career. You know, um, you know he he he's still tied for you know interception leader um, um at uh, the University of Wisconsin. I think catching twenty one interceptions. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in his time there. You know, um, the the, the success that he's had. You know, you know, just based on you know uh, the type of guy he is, like. He took the cards that, that, that God dealt him, and, and, and he, he made the most of it. Um, um, and and it's because of like the, the, the genius part that we talk about. You know, he sees the game uh, differently. He's always one step ahead, and I can say that from from watching film with him, from 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 years of being in the film room with him, and him just trying to teach us how to see the game differently, and and, and just take our knowledge of the game to um, the next level. And, and 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 yeah, I mean, he used to tell us all the time, uh, even when he was in the NFL. He said he comp he would compete against guys yearly that that, that were bigger than him, faster than him. But it, the mental part of the game is what set him apart. It was why he was able to play for so long. And I think you know that's directly translating into the way he coaches and why he's had the success that he's had up to this point. And like I said, um, I think there's even more you know you know that that that, 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 that he has in him um, um, that, that he can bring to the table. Just like I said um, um, in meetings with him, it would. It, 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 it was often that offensive coaches would come in and ask him questions, and he'd take the offensive coaches to the board and just talk through them and just talk them through based on, you know, what he sees in certain things. So, um, yeah, he just, he sees the game differently. And like I said, the, 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 the biggest part of that, in my opinion, is just anybody who's seen the guy knows that, you know, he, he, he wouldn't stand out in any crowd just off the physical attributes. But, you know, the mental side of the game, um, uh, uh, he, he, he's one of the best in the country. And I think that's not – I don't think that's debatable. Thanks to Madison for hopping on. He, he's a busy guy right now. He's doing some, he's working with, he's back in North Carolina at home, working for a company that helps with disaster relief. So with everything going down in Florida, you know, he, he's got his hands full. So we appreciate him uh, cutting out some time for us. Before we uh, wrap up this quick episode, I'm just going to drive it home one more time. Jim Leonard, Jim Leonard, Jim Leonard only name you need to be worried about right now. If he takes care of business, he's more than likely Wisconsin's next head.
football coach. One of the hardest things I had to learn in this business during two previous coaching changes, after Brett Bielema left, after Gary Anderson left, a lot of people are going to be throwing out a lot of different information and you can't always trust it. Everything has an angle and a reason behind it. Before you read anything, ask yourself this question. Why does that source want this information out? Agents, and especially even coaches, love getting their names on these hot board lists or the rumor mill, whatever, because they can use it to leverage more money for themselves. Most of what you read over the next several months probably isn't going to be true or have very little truth to it. I had good people who I trust give me some really bad information during those last two coaching searches. And I'm trying to do my best to, to navigate through all the crap, through all the BS that's going to be coming my way and everyone else's way over the next several months here. That's why I'm, I'm trying to nip it in the butt right now that, you know, if I end up being wrong... I mean, obviously, like, I've, I've left it open. A lot can change. I mean, Jim Leonard probably can't go 0-7, 1-6. You know, the team can't quit on him and, and all that. You know, he has to be competent as a head coach. Uh, but, but if I end up getting this one wrong and, you know, he does really well as a head coach and he's still not the man in 2023, bring the hammer down on me. I deserve it. I just feel like a, a lot of people out there, they're Regina George, they're trying to make fetch happen. Some of you won't get that at all. Probably very few of you will, actually. But my contacts say everything revolves around what Jim Leonard does at this point, And I'm going to stand by that until I'm told differently. Hope to get one more podcast in this week. We'll, we'll make it a trio. we got to look at Northwestern. We're going to meet with the players, actually, uh, Wednesday morning. Don't really have high hopes for that one. I'm assuming they've been coached to death on what to say <laughs> what to say about this whole thing. So I don't think we're gonna get anything good. But fingers crossed. We'll see. We also got Wisconsin basketball media day. If anybody cares about that sport anymore, I know a lot of you were looking forward to it, and now we got to deal with this uh, whole Coach Chris, Coach Leonard saga. Uh, maybe push basketball coverage back a, a little bit till it's relevant right now i'm not sure it is but uh anyway again hope to come back one more time this week take a look at northwestern and if the badgers can somehow pull it all together to get a, a road win that would actually be pretty substantial in the grand scheme of things wildcats have won six of the last seven against the badgers in evanston so we'll uh, see you again later this week and as always thanks for tuning in